What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of Talk Wrestling. We are back here on NoDQ.com after a week hiatus, although you got me on the, the live show there last week, live with Jeff Beecham on Periscope. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you didn't, well, it was my first time, so leave me alone. Got a lot of questions to go through, plenty of material. Thank you guys so much for responding on Twitter and Instagram. I greatly appreciate the support from all of you that responded. I cannot wait to respond to these questions. I use the word respond a lot for some reason. <laughs> Let's get right to it. On Instagram, from Matt Willette Music. On a scale of 1 to 10, how confident are you that the NXT women will be booked as well on the main roster? Will Hunter Hearst Helmsley remain their main booking influence on Raw? On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to go with a very confident 7 or 8. Only because Triple H is there to help oversee things. Yes, Vince is still in charge on Raw and SmackDown. But Triple H is a big influence, and he brought the girls up for a reason. He's brought Charlotte and Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch into the fold now on the main roster. At least what we saw on Monday. I've not seen SmackDown this week, and pay-per-view was to be determined this Sunday. So we'll see what happens in the going weeks. But based on what I saw Monday night, I am very confident in the Divas of NXT getting a solid push on Raw and SmackDown. I cannot wait to see what those three have in store for us the next couple weeks and in the coming months. I've, I've spoken volumes about my support of the WWE and NXT women, and I hope, I hope, I hope that the influx of the three new girls on the main roster will boost the rest of the division, the Bellas and Paige and Naomi and uh, Tamina, will all be boosted up that much more into the main roster spotlight of WWE. That'd be awesome. This is from Twitter, I believe. TK Supporter 24 at Austin Stone. Who would you book Kevin Owens with after his feud with Cena is over? I personally would do a feud with Cesaro. Um, well, Aaron and I talked about this on the prediction show the other day when we taped talking about Battleground that I'd like to see Cesaro be the one that takes the belt off Owens after Sunday because Aaron and I picked Owens to win the U.S. title on Sunday against John Cena. Um, but, you know, they could do a few with Cesaro. They could do a few with really anybody with Owens. Owens, as much as we're not a fan of him personally because of his antics, I enjoy seeing what he's going to do every week on Raw, and I enjoy his material to a certain extent. Not all the time, but a lot of the time I do. And I think that he could feud just with anybody. Cesaro is definitely the top pick. I agree with you, Austin. Um, I don't see really anybody. You know, they could have Rusev be involved there, too, although it would be a battle of two heels. And they have Ziggler waiting in the wings for, for Rusev at, for SummerSlam, probably. We talked about that on the show, too. What they earned. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I'd like to see... Owens feud with somebody he has a feud with yet, maybe. You know, maybe one of the uh, the lower tier guys that needs a U.S. title shot, like a Zack Ryder or, uh, or somebody in that echelon of the, uh, that, that, uh, that pegging order, I guess you could say there to be. But Cesaro's definitely my top pick. This is from Wayne Martinsky. Hey, Jeff, I feel the whole GM, authority, Vince McMahon, evil owner of the show has run its course for a while now. How do you think they could get away from it, and how do you think it would make the product better? Um, I personally don't think that it's run its course. I only say that because, you know, how else do you really, you know, have a babyface overcome the ultimate odds than to, than to battle the evil, the evil empire, the evil owner, the evil authority, you know, the evil GM. You know, yeah, you had the champion who can be a you know, a, a decent heel champion. Seth Rollins has not been that person. So, uh, I don't know if... I don't know if they could have it. But, you know, as long as Seth is champion, and again, that could be changing Sunday. Um, you know, but again, you know, they, they need to have an authority figure still booking the matches on TV and still, you know... Yeah, the GM of NXT is interesting. I like the GM. That's Regal, William Regal. He's a great GM. You don't see him a whole lot on the show except to authoritate, to make matches, and to really keep things on the straight and narrow. 
you know, something like that would be better. But having the, you are right in the sense, Wayne, that the evil authority, the evil empire, the evil owner is is a played out scenario. But again, how to get away from it at this point, I honestly don't know. I'd like to see him try. That'd be a different approach. But what what do you do that hasn't been done already? You know. This is from Cam Johnson. Do you think Jeff Jarrett should buy TNA and rebrand it as Global Force Wrestling? I ask this question because TNA is on the verge of going out of business and may be saved if Jarrett buys it. Um, what material are you using to say that TNA is going out of business exactly, Cam? There's been reports on ODQ.com and other wrestling websites that TNA is having trouble paying their production talent. But it doesn't mean they're going out of business. It just means they're having trouble with money. They're not going out of business just yet. And they've got the funding of the Carters. The Carters have money. They've had money. or They wouldn't have bought the controlling share of TNA from the Jarretts in the first place. Let's not forget that. Um, should Jeff Jarrett buy TNA? Um, I think he would like to have controlling interest of TNA back under his um, governing. But, you know, he's got Global Force Wrestling now. He's got his own company to run now where he didn't need TNA to help boost that. He's got a great rub from TNA now that he's been on Impact in the Global Force t-shirt and a period of anniversary and one King of the Mountain championship and everything. But do we really need to see the Jarrett's in control of TNA again? I don't think we do. I think TNA is starting to slowly get better. They've got a decent heel champion right now, Nathan Carter III, and I can't believe I said that, but that's the way I feel. I'm surprised that I feel that way, but I do. I think I think he'll be a good champion. I think if the authority figure that they bring in to replace um, Dixie, whoever that may be, and if you don't watch, you don't read spoilers, I'm not going to say who it is, but you might find out uh, on Impact if you haven't seen it already. Um, it is just to see where that part of the storyline goes. But TNA's doing okay. They don't need somebody to buy them out just just yet. Travis J. Sloan, match card wise, your favorite Starcade and your least favorite Starcade. For me, Starcade 89 would be my favorite, and my least favorite would be Starcade 98. Nothing to do with Goldberg losing to Nash, other than the first two matches. The rest of the card was just dull. Um, Starcade 98 was pretty bad. I will definitely grant you that, Travis. Um, and not just because Goldberg lost his streak, although that, you know, that was a big part of it. That was kind of a lame way to go. Um, not exactly my favorite finish in wrestling history, to be sure. Um, but as far as my favorite Starcade, 97 was great. 97 had a good, solid card, top to bottom. Yes, Zabisco Bischoff was meh. Yes, Hogan Sting was a horrible finish. But overall, the card was really solid. It was a decent show. Least favorite were probably the Battle Bowl Starcades. I'm talking like 91, I think even 92. They were pretty bad. They were they were pretty lousy. Just just from what I remember. Um, I haven't watched them all yet. I haven't gone on the network and watched the entire library just yet. It's been over a year. Come on, Jeff, get on it, right? I know. But um, I, I I remember the, the 91, 92 Starcades being pretty, pretty lousy. This is from... Boney SRL on Twitter, at Alex Boney. I want to know where in your list of greatest wrestlers of all time Brock Lesnar is. Lesnar, now that he's returned for the last three years and established himself as a dominant heel and a dominant WWE champion, um, is definitely up there on my all-time list. Lesnar is great. He is... He's a solid bad guy, but he's been a great good guy the last couple weeks too against Seth Rollins. So you know he 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 Brock has proven he can play either side of the fence and play it well. Better as a bad guy, let's be honest, but he's still been both, and he's done very well as both. I thought, um, but greatest of all time, I mean, you know, you've got Hogan and Flair, and Undertaker, and. You know, Austin and Rock and Triple H and Sting and, you know, um, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and all those guys are the greatest of all time. Buddy Rogers, Lou Fez, Bruno San Martino, um, 
Harley Race. You know, those are the greatest of all time. And where Brock ranks among those, I'm not exactly sure. But I do know that he's actually pretty good. So we'll see, we'll see where Brock's career takes him down the line, okay? That's going to do it for this episode of Talk Wrestling. Thank you all so much for watching. We will see you next week with more Talk Wrestling.